Good Miniature Monday, friends. Raj here, aka the Wisco Horn Dog. Now, if you've been watching my YouTube videos for a while, you'll see that I mention a thing called Wapaka quite frequently, and I'm going to be doing it a whole lot more as Wapaka registration opens up. So I thought I'd put together a video for those who aren't familiar with me from other sources of media, but Wapaka is a tournament. Well, used to be a tournament. It's held annually and it has it has some roots which will explain kind of what it is today but basically started many years ago I ran a Warhammer tournament during my uh, winter break during college and that was always in January the first week of January because I needed that time to whip up a bunch of terrain and stuff like that so that's kind of where the date first originated and the tournaments weren't nothing special and uh, we just did them at a local hobby shop but they did grow pretty big back then this is the early 2000s so i think the first one was 2002 and then i pretty much did them every year up until 2008 and they grew you know i'm kind of a perfectionist so i think that reflected in the scenarios the rules and the running of the entire thing so i think people responded to that and it got pretty big, but then eventually just became too much work for me. So I kind of stopped doing that. And then in 2009 or 10, I think it was 2010 is where we pick our story back up with the actual proper Wapaka tournament. But my good friend, Ryan, the bear, he had a, number of improvements he wanted to do a tournament for some reason and he always told me that if he was going to run a tournament he would call it wapaka after the city of wapaka where he lives and um, years later he proved himself right and he did it <laughs> and there's a tournament called wapaka which is a uh, forever being misspelled and mispronounced across the land, but that is the official pronunciation and the official spelling is W-A-A-A-G-H exclamation point space PACA after the Warhammer orc battle cry. And he, he did a lot of stuff that would have never have occurred to me. I also focused on gameplay, but he, uh, one thing, he picked up a, a beautiful venue, a great venue, this Wapaka Ale House, where you could get your beers on site, your food on site. I always did it in a hobby shop just because that was the cheapest thing to do. So that's all, you know, what I always did. But he kind of stepped out into the, uh, his own venue there. And, you know, it really wasn't that much more expensive back then than what, you know, the hobby shop was. And then the other thing was he went crazy on the award so ryan is a bit of an artist and over the years he has built some real monstrosities and uh, check out this giant ogre iron gut blade here and he really went to town the last year that i did my tournament he kind of helped me out with uh, coming up with some fun awards which was a hammer and a shield and you can see him here wielding these and they, I think they were made out of wood, maybe foam or something like that. So these are the early precursors. And he went on to do some awesome stuff, actually make crap out of wood and steel. And he, <laughs> he made a trebuchet, you know, just in his spare time. So that's uh, kind of demonstrating what kind of cool guy he is. And so for the awards for the very first Wapaka was a functioning goblin bolt thrower. I think he claimed it was one quarter scale, but uh, seem, I'm not sure about that. We can, we can debate that, but it was functioning and it actually shot little uh, arrows out. And then along with that, a fancy orc helmet, orc shield, and an orc choppa. So those will go to the best overall, the best general, best sports, best painted, you know, the kind of top three there. And he put that all together so that's another thing that from my perspective i never i'm not even to this day i'm not super motivated by awards or anything like that it's just the, the playing of the game which is fun for me 
and uh, he really took that up a notch. And then at this point, I wasn't really super involved with it, but I did help him with the scenarios. He wanted to have it heavily based off soft scores and have painting and sports, you know, factor equally in the, the paint or the uh, scoring matrix with battle. So I set that up for him and I kind of did, you know, something that I want to do, which was just have a really limited scoring scheme because it seemed like every tournament at the time, this was kind of before the UK stuff had like the O20 system that became prevalent elsewhere. But every tournament you go to would have different points and you never really knew how many points were good and it was different. And if you had 139 points, that might be good at one event or it might be low at a different event. So every event is kind of reinventing the wheel. So I guess I was doing that, but I uh, kind of just put the points way down. So a win was three points draw was two and a loss was one. I think maybe I had an objective on top of that. So the battle ended up being on a scale of zero to 20, maybe five to 20. And then the sports and the paint were also on a scale of zero to 20. And so the, the final values were all weighted the same. We could get into whether they're all truly equal. Um, that would be a different discussion for a different day. But um, so at that point, it kind of came uh, became well known because every point mattered. So um, the very first winner, John, he fully participated in every aspect of the event. So we should get into some of the extracurricular stuff, which is the mustache contest we had every year. So it was on Saturday night, and people <laughs> would get together. At first, it was just the girlfriends judging everything, and then we brought in the uh some roller derby girls and then some local waitresses stuff like that and they would actually score everything and it was completely optional you got one point uh for participating in that and that one point ended up being huge that's like the difference between a draw and a win so the first year people weren't really aware of that but then in the following years people picked up on that holy crap i gotta do everything i gotta track down every point so getting your list in on time, uh, finishing your games in on time, not making uh, any mistakes in the writing on your score sheets, stuff like that, that all cost you. So uh, the first winner, John Stantz, the Silver Fox himself, he got all that extracurricular stuff flawlessly. He par fully participated in the event, which is what we're looking for. That's what we're rewarding here. And uh, he was able to sneak, sneak in the best overall award there and took that bolt through our home which I believe is sitting at Tower Games in the Twin Cities. I think I saw Sean Poshel post the pics of that goblin bolt thrower <laughs> nearly a decade later still intact. I wonder the tension on the the ropes what would that be if it could still fire a shot that would be interesting but yeah so that's kind of where a certain mystique developed for Wapaka was the soft scores sportsmanship you had to have a couple best player votes in order to have a shot at the overall. So it was a full hobby experience. And uh, on top of that, you know, we did some stuff with the charity raffles, which again, at the time, someone could correct me on this, but I think this was one of the first events to do it where uh, the raffle was done between the last game and the uh, when the overall winners were announced. So uh, it actually worked out really well. The Bears' wife handled all that. And uh, there was this nice little half hour break to give the TO me. Um, I didn't do the scoring at first, but in following years I did. Uh, time to go through and tabulate everything. And then uh, over time also a team aspect developed where uh, you would uh, show up with your buddies. We'd have opening ceremonies where each team would present themselves. And it was a good chance to bust. bust pe I go around, bust people's balls. <laughs> I was pretty indoctrinated in the event at this point. And that, that's one of the uh, kind of things that stayed with it over the years. And so my participation, the first year I set the uh, scenarios and stuff, I believe, 
up, but I wasn't involved with the actual scoring or anything like that. I think Marty Gasca, uh, his wife, who uh, they ran the Adepticon stuff at the time, actually did the scoring. And then Bear himself, he actually did all the announcements and everything. So I think there's pics of him doing his announcement stuff. And it uh, over time, you know, I helped them develop a comp system. For a few years we had that with some banding and stuff like that and kind of my participation each year has kind of stepped up, stepped up, stepped up, stepped up. Probably after year six or seven when we're at this point up to 100 players, people are flying in from all over the country to uh, outside of the country even as well. The uh, I think year seven, I think we're on eight, no last year was seven, year, year five or six we had more people flying in than actual like local people from the Midwest, uh, people from the South, California, Canada, overseas, the Black Sun Boys. So that was pretty amazing. That could be the high water mark, but um, <laughs> as we see, Games Workshop threw us a curveball. So we had the end times we had to deal with, and then um, my participation at that point is probably over 50%. Bear he kind of built all the tables. He's still building the awards and stuff like that, but he's kind of petering out here a little bit, and I'm kind of stepping up, handling the not only the emceeing of the event, but the actual email lists and stuff like that. So he actually started out doing all of that, and it kind of transitioned over to me to let him just kind of do his creative stuff. And then when Age of Sigmar dropped, it kind of put us in a bind. So this is two, two Wapakas ago, and... Uh, there was no, <laughs> at that time, it was a complete surprise. And then it would be a full year before they built any kind of system to play other people with, with points or anything like that. So at that time, we were looking at other games kind of anyway in our personal lives. And uh, we weren't going to, basically, it would fall on me to come up with some kind of from scratch comp system to come up with points values for everything or... I think there was a pool system that became developed, and I, <laughs> I really wasn't interested in any of that. Um, my interest was already kind of waning at the time, but um, I decided to open it up, and we had uh, moved to a multi-game format where I uh, was going to run a fun Infinity event because I was interested in that game system, but... I reached out to other folks, so Eric Hagen to run some Saga, and other people I knew to run different Warhammer events, stuff like that. So we had the big space, we had the, the time reserved, so we were going to hell or high water, we were going to run something. So to keep everybody together, we ran a, a multi-game system type thing where there'd be lots of little miniature tournaments, and it worked, worked pretty well. We kept the team aspect which um, is kind of like the overriding theme nowadays. And then the, uh, some of the uh, stuff has, has fallen by the wayside. So mustache contest is no more. You don't, uh, can't entice people to participate if uh, you know, there's no soft score points that they're going to earn. So um, <laughs> you know, like the first year you had to participate in order to have a chance to win. But once it was just for fun, um, Kind of that aspect kind of dropped off but uh, then this following year we did it again and we kind of consolidated to fewer tournaments but bigger ones and we actually moved to a different venue and uh, it's been quite an odyssey with all of that but this july then we are coming back around and we're going to be doing the third multi-game multi-system format so i'm going to be talking with some folks here in July and at that point there's probably going to be a mention of Wapaka every week as it seems to take over my hobby life for about half of the year but um, should should be going this well I'm not running a lot of this stuff and I'm going to be purposely trying to uh, limit my involvement in certain aspects so I can participate in the games play in a tournament that somebody else is running so it's going to be some updates on that in the future, but I thought it would be good to, uh, for those who just know me through these YouTube videos to uh, 
kind of follow along and learn about <laughs> this magical event. It's quite awesome. You're definitely welcome to show up and play some games. And uh, we got plenty of people who actually show up and don't play any games. So that's kind of how fun it is at this point. And I think that is about it. I'm missing tons of stuff. I'm sure we have the Feats of Strength, which is a weird uh, fitness contest that developed in the <laughs> late evenings early on. And there's the Men of Intrigue, which are bizarre uh, one-off models that people were producing. Um, I can't think of any other stuff here. But if you have any good Wapaka memories, because uh, you've been there, <laughs> please post below. I know I'm missing tons of stuff. But those are some of the highlights of the development of the tournament. So we're going into year nine this year. It's the, uh, I think, 25th to the 28th. It's, it's always synced up with Pro Bowl weekend now. So uh, we've had it on the NFC Championship weekend a couple times, and that's always a hassle when people are dropping out of their games to go watch <laughs> the football. So it's Pro Bowl weekend. Nobody gives a shit about that sport. But um, welcome to come, and I'm um, sure you're going to be getting lots of updates on this as uh, the registration process unfolds. But I think that's enough for now. Why don't we hit the hobby desk? This week's hobby desk, continuing to work on terrain. I have uh, haven't done too much. I actually had a weekend getaway with my wife. We had the kid taken over to grandma and grandpa's. And we had a three-day weekend where we were down south over New Glarus where they make the spotted cow. I was imbibing quite a few beverages. There's some cool stuff down there. So I actually burned up entire weekend of Friday and then the days before that was spent doing all the stuff that I would normally do on the weekend so actually it's a pretty sad affair for hobby but I got these uh, walls finished actually not finished they're in progress so these walls originally you can see there's some underlying paint and then there's some cardboard attached to them so these walls these were built for my Gorka Morka campaign several years ago and uh, they were, the core are these secret weapon kind of junkyard walls that are, they're not too high and they're not too long. So when I, once I got them, I realized they wouldn't be suitable for like a full fortress walls. And uh, so I built them up just with plastic card and uh, other little bits and stuff like that. And then, um, so, <laughs> we used them for Gorka Morka. They served us well. And then once we started playing Infinity, I almost had enough stuff to do a, a, a junkyard table, mixing in with some of the hab units and stuff that I did. So um, I have been using them, but once I did my Infinity kind of uh, ramshackle huts made out of corrugated cardboard and stuff like that, um, I kind of got the idea to go back on these and kind of touch them up, make them fully infinity playable. And what I mean by that was they were kind of had a desert base on them. So I just pulled that off. They're kind of, they're sturdy enough. They can stand up on their own. So I kind of ripped off all the flock. And then there was like some gaps and stuff like that in the holes. And the way, uh, <laughs> the way infinity works, just like a little tiny little nub in a wall can, uh, cost you dearly in the ARO phase. So uh, I went back and then I tacked on these kind of corrugated pieces of cardboard, which is what I built all those little huts out of. So this will tie it all together. So they've been glued on and then mod podged a couple times just to uh, reinforce them. And that seems to work pretty well. I've played uh, quite a few games with those hut tables, probably. They've been used for at least a dozen games, and they're holding up perfectly well. So that uh, setup seems to work pretty good. So I'm going to be going back then, and I'll be priming these guys. I don't know if I'm going to fully repaint them, but these colors, which is mostly orange rust, which on uh, these uh, the little huts that I have, they're not really that color. They're kind of multicolor, so, and they're kind of darker too. So I'm going to be going back and giving these guys a nice dark color to match so you can have these awesome junky shanty towns and then you have these nice junky walls to go along with it so that should be pretty awesome and i'll be able to do like a full junk 
junk town table slum so that'd be really cool um the uh other stuff i was working on these things and um you see there are planners here and then inside the planner is just basically brown stuff so i'm trying to decide what so these are plastic plants that have been repainted and I'm kind of wonder if i do it go in and put flock in there if it's gonna kind of look strange because you're gonna have plastic plants and then you're gonna have like actual flock plants so i'm, so I'm kind of undecided on that you know, I was working on them last week and kind of stopped due to that so uh, if you have any suggestions on that, is it all right just with the brown here? It looks kind of plain. Um, maybe add some tufts or something. Not totally sure about that. Any feedback you have would be appreciated. But on the, the miniature front, I'm almost there. I've got the Redville box. I'm going to open it up this week and kind of decide what I'm going to do with these guys. Outside of Infinity, I'm definitely buying some new stuff i'm looking at early byzantine models right now for saga to do byzantines or uh, romans for the ats and arthur supplement or they also have eastern romans early byzantines in there um, doing something with the varangian guard perhaps as well for the full saga there's something cool about that i don't think i've ever seen anybody run that the rules are pretty extensive. You can have a whole warband of just Ferengian guard dudes with Dane axes. Not sure how competitive that is, but I think it would be fun to do. I've got some dudes with Dane axes, so that would definitely work well with those guys already. So trying to narrow down which manufacturer I want to use for that. And then I'm picking up some more Necrons for the Shadow War. I think I've mentioned I've been using my Junkyard Necrons, but I'm going to... Uh, try to paint some more we're actually having a round two of our campaign here i actually gotta wrap up round one yet there's going to be a big campaign finale battle but then we're gonna do round two and at that point i'll probably actually document some of my games for chatting out on the channel here but i want to do some more necrons and i want them to uh, not be so labor intensive so I'll probably just do a quick scheme. And same thing with the Byzantines. I'm getting kind of tired of the uh, high quality aspect. I'm going to do, do quantity at this point. I'm going to kick some stuff out. But uh, that's kind of the goal. And then, yeah, I still have that Infinity stuff. I'm going to figure it out. But uh, battery is running low. And uh, we're going to have to call it here. If uh, you have any hobby goals you'd like to share, please post below. Otherwise, thanks for following along on this journey, and uh, thanks for subscribing, liking. Please share these if you find them interesting, and i got to get out of here. Have a great Miniature Monday. I'll catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm.